Well, hello, and welcome to the Romantic Tale video. Uh, this video today has been brought to you by Coca-Cola and by Cheez-Its. Uh, not because they paid for this video at all, but because I am eating and drinking these as I do it. So literally, I would not be doing this video if it weren't for those two things. Anyway, uh, the Romantic Tale video should not be seen until you finish the Indiana Jones video, and you'll find out why right now. So, you've completed the Arthur stories and the Indiana Jones tale, so here's my question for you. What are the elements of a romantic hero's tale? I would like you to think about this for a couple seconds. I'd like you to pause the video, think about what are some elements that we've seen in every King Arthur tale, in every Indiana Jones clip, that perhaps is a little bit different from something you've seen in Beowulf or in the Canterbury Tales. Alright, so we're ready to move on? I hope so. Hope you didn't just keep the video playing. In the traditional hero's tale, as you learned in the Canterbury Tales quest, you have these steps. You have the status quo, the hero just minding his own business. Uh, the hero is given some sort of assistance, uh, usually from an older figure. The hero goes on a physical journey. They encounter uh, some trials and setbacks once they get to their new realm. Uh, they accomplish a task, they achieve victory, and then they return home. That's the typical hero's tale. Uh, similar in Beowulf, uh, similar in the Knight's Tale, in the Canterbury Tales. Uh, it's a story that we see over and over and over again. When we're looking at a romantic hero's tale, there are four things we need to keep in mind that aren't always necessarily in the other hero's tales. The first one is traveling. Think about Gawain and the Green Knight. He had to travel for a year and a day. He had to go a great distance just to find the Green Knight's chapel. It would not have been okay for him to simply walk to it next door or find it in a couple of days. In a romantic hero's tale, there's always a lot of traveling, and this usually symbolizes that the character is growing. There is an element of magic. Think about every single King Arthur story we read, whether it was Merlin or whether it was some sort of uh, trick that one character used on another. There is magic found throughout. Uh, this is, is usually meant to suggest that there's something more to life than just the just the day-to-day -day matter that we see around us. There's some sort of other spirits out there that add to the, the romance of the tale. Uh, disguise. Sometimes it's a good disguise, sometimes it's a bad disguise. We've seen disguises in the Canterbury Tales. Uh, Merlin is in disguise sometimes. King Arthur was in disguise at the beginning. The Green Knight was in disguise. Indiana Jones, there were some disguises as well. Uh, but there are always, uh, there's an element of disguise in a romantic hero's tale. And when you make your own tale, you're going to need to have disguise as well. The last thing we need to keep in mind is nobility. When these heroes in romantic tales are completing their tasks, they are always doing so following the chivalric code, trying to live up to a noble standard, trying to live up to a higher life. They're not just trying to help themselves. They're not just trying to goof around. Yes, they make mistakes along the way. None of them are perfect, but they are trying to do something for a higher standard. Uh, so please make sure you keep that in mind when you go to make your own tale. So these four things, traveling, magic, disguise, and nobility, these are all essential elements to the romantic hero's tale, in addition to all of the other hero's tale elements you've learned. I hope that helps as you start to put together your King Arthur projects. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck on the project.